Of all the endless variety of phenomena which nature presents to our senses, there is none that fills our minds with greater wonder than the inconceivably complex movement which, in its entirety, we designate as human life. Learning computer science is no more just about becoming a computer developer than teaching English is about creating more novelists. Today, every profession worthy of a name is rapidly changing due to the integration of computers, and the problems this integration is solving is nothing less than breathtaking. Automotive, medical, biology, zoology, music, you name it, and computers are revolutionizing it. Just as farmers increasingly will depend on sensors and satellite imaging, and physicians will look to more accurate diagnostic systems, so will craftsmen increase their use of digital fabrication, and artists find new mediums of expression. This means that using a computer, specifically being able to make a computer solve problems related to your profession, is going to be a key to becoming a successful contributor to the problems the human race faces. Good morning, everyone. As you just saw, the future is indeed being written in code. Before we kick off our next panel, which is Preparing America for Tomorrow, let us take a moment to think about this topic. The future, what will it look like? How will we live and work in this very digital future? How will industries be transformed and disrupted through increasingly intelligent technologies? What will the workforce of the future look like? And what skills should we empower our children with to thrive in this very digital future? What should they be learning to address the skills gap? These are big questions, heavy questions, that I'm sure many of you think about from time to time. At Infosys Foundation USA, we think about these topics almost every day. And thanks to the funding provided to us by Infosys, we also get to do something about it. The video that you just saw shared a little bit about what we do and why we do this. And if you want to learn more about the work that we are doing or be inspired anyway, please stop by our Crossroads venue downstairs where you can engage with close to 200 amazing people who are championing CS education and maker education across the entire United States. And right here, we have invited three of those amazing people that are involved in CS education so you can hear directly from them why it matters and the work that they are doing. So please welcome on stage Neil, Sheena, and Dan Garcia. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Neil Salas Griffin, and I'm the CEO of Code Now. But I'm also just a kid from the south side of Chicago. So, I got involved with Infosys Foundation USA because with Code Now, we've been teaching young people for the past six years from underrepresented backgrounds, from all types of socioeconomic statuses, how to code and make their ideas real with software. In doing so, we've learned a lot, but we have a long way to go. And just recently, we launched a new round of workshops. So this past year, we worked with Infosys Foundation USA, and just over a few weekends, we taught 155 young people in high school, from all types of backgrounds, how to code, design, and make their ideas real with software. Over 96% of, the, of the students that came out of our program said that they want to go back and study computer science when they go to college. This is amazing, but there's a lot more that we have to do. So, I'd like you all to humor me for a moment, and I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and think about a time when you discovered that you were doing what you loved, that you had a moment, an aha moment, that you said, wow, I really love doing this. Now think about enabling that same moment for a number of young people. You can open your eyes now. This is what Infosys Foundation USA has been enabling our nonprofit to do for the past six years. And going forward, there are thousands more students that we need to help. Thank you very much.
Hello everyone, I'm Sheena Vaidinathan, a computer science teacher in Los Altos district here in the Bay Area. About 10 years back, I did something a little crazy. I switched careers from being a computer scientist in Silicon Valley to a computer science teacher in a public school district. Woo! <laughs> During those 10 years, <laughs> Yeah, and now I get to do what I really love. During the last 10 years, I have taught several hundreds of middle schoolers to code. Middle school, 11, 12, and 13 year olds who run into my class excited, enthusiastic, eager to learn, and they love to use code to express their creativity, making apps and games that are personally relevant to them. In fact, right now, while I'm here, they are out in class making a game with Python. I'm going to go check it out tomorrow when I go back to school. Um, I've also, over the uh, last 10 years, worked with my uh, district to de develop curriculum that impacts over 4,500 students each year. I realize that not every child will have access to CS education unless we have CS teachers and we have an extreme so shortage of computer science teachers. I'm now on the board of Computer Science Teachers Association, CSTA, the largest association that supports and builds uh, computer science teachers for our schools. As you can guess, unlike any other subject teachers, CS teachers usually do not have a background in computer science. Professional development is critical. And that is why we are so thankful that Infosys Foundation USA has made a huge investment in CSDA and in the professional development pipeline so that we can have more computer science teachers and we can really reach computer science to all students. Thank you. So I'm Dan Garcia, I'm a teaching professor at UC Berkeley. Um, I've been really passionate about the computer science for all movement and been fortunate to be involved with that, connected with folks like Jan Cooney at the National Science Foundation who has helped broaden participation in computing to everybody in the United States. So part of this movement involves bringing an exciting new computer science course, computer science principles, to all of the high schools of the country, as many teachers as we can, but it isn't enough to create a great curriculum, you have to work with the professional development, as Sheena talked about, to reach the teachers as well. At UC Berkeley, we created a course called The Beauty and Joy of Computing, and this course has shown remarkable success in reaching students who normally aren't getting computer science. We shattered the record at UC Berkeley for the number, for the percentage of women in an introductory computer science course. We had 50% of our students were women uh, in 2013, and just this last semester I checked, and we have 60% of our students. We're thinking about having a male outreach now for computer science. We're so excited. So part of that is part of the big picture. There are many people, there's many people on my team, there's many other folks, I'm very fortunate, there's a crossroads conference that's happening right downstairs. There are many thought leaders who are really passionate about this space. People are engaged at all levels, um, at the level of coding camps, as Neil talked about, at the level of CSTA and teachers, as Sheena talked about, at the educators in the, in the higher ed who are working to create curriculum that are being used by folks all across the country. Um, it's a really exciting space, and we're starting to move the ball forward, but we need your help. So I have a a wish list for you. So, so Neil said, can I, can I uh, ask you to close your eyes? Can I ask you to think about three things you can do to help this space? First of all, hear, hear how important computer science education is for all and believe that. It is the digital future, it is reading and writing arithmetic and computer science. So think about that space and how important it is to, to kids in high school and kids in the K-12 space. One, think about whether you could contribute, you or your company or you personally could contribute toward any of the opportunities, any of the coding camps, any of the professional development opportunities, I want to maybe give CSTA as a great place to, to direct you if you have funds to push into that place. We need to help to support teachers getting professional development over the summers. Um, two, there's a group called Teals, uh, and Teals allows any one of your engineers or, or, or programmers to work with a local high school. 
See if you can su support them. Support them to show up late for the first hour or two of the beginning of the morning. They'll still get the work done. And what they do is they'll, rather than drive to work, they'll drive to the local high school, teach a computer science course, in situ teaching and helping a computer science teacher, and then go back to work. So think about supporting TEALs and suggesting for your engineers to go off and do that. Um, and third, think about trying to support a, a supportive diverse workspace. It's really important that the students that we're generating go off and work for your companies and feel welcomed and feel that it's a, it's, it's a workspace that is supportive of their diverse needs. So try to encourage diversity at all levels. So in summary, the three of us and many folks downstairs and many folks across the country not represented are trying to work for the CS for All movement. See what you can do in your just a little way. Sometimes you don't realize how much forcing power you have in little ways just to suggest to your boss, to that boss, to that boss, to release money, release some engineers to go help this movement. It's a really important movement and we need everyone involved to push the ball forward. Thank you very much.